It is impossible to predict whether the toss results in a head or tail in advance. But we are pretty sure that the toss will result in either a head or a tail as they are the only possible outcomes. Whenever it is impossible to know the exact outcome of an experiment, we usually convert the chances of occurrences into numbers and try to analyze it. Such a branch of mathematics is called probability theory. Here, in this chapter, we are going to discuss some basic theories associated with this area. Look at this small robot. He is really cute, isn't he? From now on, he will be assisting us to learn mathematics. His name is Clappy. Clappy, please say a hi. Hi. Hey Clappy, why did you come now? I have a message for you, teacher. What message? There is a chance of raining. Yes, looks like it might rain. Thank you, Clappy. You can go now. Okay, teacher. How did we get to know that it might rain now? Well, we can see clustering of dark clouds, see a lightning, hear a thundering sound and we know from experience these are the signs of a rain, right? Whenever there are such changes in the atmosphere, we can easily say it might rain. See, now there is no chance of raining, the sky is clear. So, when there was a change in the atmosphere, we said that it might rain. But when the sky became clear, we suddenly changed our opinion and said it might not rain. Overall, we can say it may or may not rain. That is, either it rains or not. We are going to discuss these kinds of chances or probabilities in this chapter. If we take a look at the history of chances, we can see that during 16th century, Cassano in his book, discussed about the outcomes resulting from a game of gambling when there were more than two players. Also, during 17th century, Fermat and Pascal also discussed about how to divide the money when a game of gambling was suddenly stopped. Also, during 17th century, Fermat and Pascal also discussed about how to divide the money when a game of gambling is suddenly stopped. These can be thought of as the origin of the theory of probability. Jacob Burnley was the person who, in 17th century, calculated the possibilities of an outcome based on prior experiments and experiences. After that, probability theory found its vast application in socially relevant area. During 20th century, Carl McGraw introduced some basic axioms, which can be thought of as the explanations of theories of probability. Well, let's discuss a problem now. For that, let's call Clappy. Clappy, can you please bring that thing? Thank you, Clappy. Now, I am going to put some balls in this first box bought by Clappy. One, two, three, four, five, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 rose balls and 1 yellow ball. If I am going to take 1 ball from this box without looking, let's see what is the probability of obtaining a rose ball. How many balls are there in the box now? Yes, there are 9 rose balls and 1 yellow ball which make it a total of 10 balls. Now, I am going to take one ball from this box without looking. See, I have got a Ross ball. Let's do this experiment one more time. See, I got a Ross ball again. Let's do it one more time. Again, I got a Ross ball. What happened here? When I took the balls without looking at the box, I got most of the balls as rows. What is the reason behind this? Yes, it is because majority of the balls in this box are rows. 
Does that imply that we won't get a yellow ball? Of course not. We might even get a yellow ball as well. But can you say which ball has more chance of getting selected? Yes, it is for the rose ball, isn't it? This is due to the fact that the box contains more rose balls. Now, let's put some balls in the second box that Clappy has bought. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight rose balls. One, two. Two yellow balls. Now, without looking at the box, if I'm selecting a ball, which ball has more chance of getting selected? Let's see. See, we got a rose ball. Let's do it again. Again, I got a rose ball. In this case also, rose ball has more chance of getting selected since most of the balls are rose in color. Now, I am going to put 5 rose balls and 5 yellow balls in this third box. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 rose balls and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 yellow balls. Can you say which ball has more chance of getting selected now? Since the number of rose balls and yellow balls are the same, the chances of getting selected are the same for rose balls and yellow balls. Now, let's check all the three boxes. Each box contains 10 balls in total. In the first box, 9 balls are rose and 1 ball is yellow. Hence, if I am selecting a ball at random from the box, there are more chances that the ball is rose. For the second box, this chance is slightly less than the first box. And for the third box, the chances for selecting yellow balls and rose balls are the same. Since the total number of balls in all the three boxes were the same, we were able to calculate the probabilities very easily. Let's try to solve another situation now. Here, there are a total of 11 balls in the first box and 9 balls in the second box. If I am taking a ball at random without looking, what is the probability of getting a rose ball? In the first box, 6 out of 11 balls are rose in color. Hence, the probability of selecting a rose ball from the box is 6 by 11 in the case of first box. In the second box, 5 out of 9 balls are rose. Hence, the probability to get a rose ball from the second box is 5 by 9. Can you say which box should we prefer so as to get a rose ball? Or which box has more chances of giving us a rose ball? To find out this, we need to find out which fraction is the larger one. Is it 6 by 11 or 5 by 9? How can we figure out which number is the larger one in the case of fractions? Well, we have several methods to find this out. Either we need to make the denominator of both the fractions the same and we can find out the larger fraction by comparing the numerators of the fractions. If I am multiplying the numerator and denominator of 6 by 11 with the denominator 9 of the fraction 5 by 9, we get 6 by 11 is equal to 6 into 9 by 11 into 9 that is 54 by 99. Similarly, to make the denominator of 5 by 9 as 99, we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 11. We get 5 by 9 is equal to 5 into 11 divided by 9 into 11, that is 55 by 99. Since the numerator 55 is greater than 54, we can say 5 by 9 is greater than 6 by 11. Let's try another method now. To find out which fraction is the greater one, multiply the numerator of the first fraction with the denominator of the second fraction and multiply the numerator of the second fraction with the denominator of the first fraction. After that, just compare the values obtained. Then the fraction 
for which numerator when multiplied by a denominator gave you a larger value is the larger fraction. That is, to know if 6 by 11 or 5 by 9 is the larger fraction, 6 into 9 is equal to 54 and 11 into 5 is equal to 55. Since 5 is the numerator that when multiplied gave you a larger value, we can say 5 by 9 is greater than 6 by 11. That is, the box which contains 5 rose balls and 4 yellow balls has more probability of giving us a rose ball when we select a ball at random from it. There are 25 papers in this box that Claffy has just bought. The numbers 1 to 25 are written on it. I am going to put these papers inside this box. If I am selecting a paper at random from this box, can you say the probability of obtaining an odd number if we draw a paper at random? Well, there are 13 odd numbers and 12 even numbers between 1 and 25. That is, if I am taking a piece of paper from the box at random, the probability of selecting an odd number is 13 by 25. What is the probability of getting an even number? Since there are 12 numbers between 1 and 25 which are even numbers, the probability to get an even number is 12 by 25. Can you say the probability of obtaining numbers that are multiples of 3? Between 1 and 25, the numbers that are multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21 and 24. That is, there are 8 numbers in total between 1 and 25 that are the multiples of 3. Hence, the probability of obtaining a number that is a multiple of 3 is 8 by 25. If so, can you say the probability to obtain a number that is a multiple of 6, 12, 18 and 24 are the multiples of 6 that lie between 1 and 25 which are a total of 4 numbers. Hence, the probability of obtaining a number that is a multiple of 6 is 4 by 25. We have seen the comparison of chances by converting them into numbers in this session. You can check the other activities given in the textbook in the Max Lab icon. download the learning app.